All right, we're doing a boiler and a blue gas path. Looks like my black marker's getting weak. So this box is 17 stories tall, and it's made of tubes, and the tubes go vertically from, from the water uh, wall at the bottom all the way up from the, the header at the bottom, all the way up in one continuous pipe to the drum. And we got coal fires blowing in there. And it is somewhere around 1600 degrees. And then the water inside the walls is absorbing that heat. And as it absorbs that heat, it, uh, it transforms, it uh, vaporizes. Latent heat of vaporization. That's a fancy word I was hunting for. So it absorbs heat and it turns from water into gas and expands. And then you have bubbles that go up to the top, and that makes pressure. And inside the walls, you're at... 650 Fahrenheit at 25, 2800 PSI. What? <laughs> All right. So then we have superheat coils. What does superheat mean? They add one degree of uh, well, anything over boiling. Yes. So there's a special word for water that is at the boiling point, and that is saturated. And then if you add any energy to that water, it's going to change from liquid water to steam. And then if you take that steam that's saturated, it's still at the boiling point. We didn't actually heat it up any when we put energy in. We just changed its state. If you put any energy into that, then it heats up, and that is superheated steam. I made my nose cone too big. All right. So, primary, secondary, third area, and final superheat. And those are coils that the steam is flowing through that hang down in the flue gas path. And this 1600 degree flue gas is going across those tubes and it's heating up the steam and it is cooling down the flue gas as it goes across those coils. And then we get down here to the bottom and we're somewhere around 700 Fahrenheit. Alright, the secondary superheat is also called the radiant superheat because it is within the lights of the fires so it is getting heat both from directly from the fire through radiation as well as through conduction. Well, what's the other one? Uh, not conduction. Damn it, I screwed that up. Convection. All right, so convection is fluids flowing across each other, exchanging heat. Conduction is when things are actually in contact directly. And uh, radiation is when the energy emitted, like the light, is actually what's doing the heating. So then... So one side, okay, so the back pass, you got the boiler side and you got the back pass where you're no longer putting, have the fire directly. The back pass is divided down the middle. What are the two different kinds of coils? Primary superheat. Primary superheat on one side and? Oh, reheat section. The reheat section on the other. So coal reheat 
is coming from the HP turbine, the first seven stages of the turbine. And then it is coming out as hot reheat and going back to the intermediate pressure turbine, which is the next five stations, stages of the turbine. All right, back pass dampers are down at the bottom and they adjust opposite each other to balance the flow across these two. What are they actually controlling? What are they looking at? Temperature. Of? Uh, on temperature of what? Reheat. Almost. Reheat. <laughs> Second guess at it. So the hot reheat temperature is going up to 1,050. And these dampers are controlling how much flue gas goes across that side to make sure it keeps, maintains that 1,050. And the other side gets the rest of it, however much that is. And the rest of it is usually actually more than half of it. All right. So then we've got the flue gas turning and going back up. And then down here, anywhere the flue gas is going down and it turns and comes up, ash falls out. So what do we have here? Countermizer. Countermizer. So there's four of these hoppers. And then that goes down to a conveyor, which then goes through an airlock thing, and then another dry flight conveyor. And then that goes into the bottom ash. Except, and I can't figure out how to draw this, the bottom ash is actually up here. So the water in the bottom ash is making a seal in the bottom because you have an open space where air would go up in there and we don't actually want that. All right. Right here where it, the flue gas is making that turn, there is a screen, the large particle ash screen, and the, the holes on it are like the size of a pencil or so, and then there's a whole bunch of orange uh, receive, air receivers and little solenoid valves, and poof, it's supposed to knock the stuff off and it falls down into the economizer ash. I see raised eyebrows. Somebody didn't know what those orange things were doing. No, I don't know what it was doing, but I always thought LPA stands stood for low pressure air. Ah. <laughs> and not large, large particle. Large particle ash screens, LPA screens. Um, I mean, I know what they were doing. I just thought. Yeah, 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 yeah. So then that goes up and then it comes back down. What is that? SCR. SCR, Selective Catalytic Reduction, which is just like the catalyst that a car has on its exhaust system. What does it do? Get rid of ammonia. Well, uh, it react, makes the ammonia react in the flue gas. It gives it a surface to react on. Okay, okay, I think we're there. So we add ammonia and then that ammonia gets to the SCR and then the ammonia reacts to reduce what? Nox. Nox. All right. So then this is going down. to the rotary air heater. What's the rotary air heater doing? It's transferring the heat from the uh, flue gas, cooling flue gas, and heating the primary. Okay, cooling the flue gas, transferring the heat from the flue gas to the primary and secondary.
So what is yeah, I'll get back to it. So have it. We're gonna call it 70 degrees going in and 600 coming out. So going down, we're turning coming back up. Anywhere we were going down, ash, and we turn to come back up, then ash falls out. And this is the uh, thing I got Nuva feeders to, to get rid of it. All right. What is next? Carbon injection. Carbon injection. That's right here, isn't it? Ooh, so many colors. All right. And what is the purpose of carbon injection? Reduce mercury. All right. Next we go to the SDA. What do we add in the SDA? Why are we doing it? To control SO2. SO2. All right. And then out the SDA, we go into the bag house. Fourteen bag house compartments. What is the bag house doing? Filtering a particle rather than fluids. Filtering is absolutely correct. Removing particulate is the the fancy engineering phrase. And uh, how do we measure how much particulate is in the flue gas? Opacity. Opacity. Opacity is a fancy word for how much light is passing through it. How much light is being blocked. The higher the opacity, the more light is being blocked. And then we go to... ID fans. And we go out the stack. And the opacity is actually measured up here on the stack. My black markers fell in. And we shoot a laser, a laser across the stack. And then there's a detector on the other side. And it knows how strong that laser is supposed to be. And it says if I've got 90% strength on my laser, I've got 10% opacity blocking it. Hold on, what's the purpose of the ID fans? Not to draft both uh, negative draft, draft through the boiler. Okay, so it pulls draft through the boiler, and uh, I think I was getting the right words out of you. It maintains? Negative draft on the boiler. All right, so we want to make sure that here in the actual boiler part itself, where it's most hottest, it's always under a vacuum. 
That way we don't have 1600 degree air blowing out every crack and every door on this whole thing. Instead, we've got air getting pulled in, which is also not good. We'd rather everything be nice and solid and tight. Uh, and that's negative one inch of water. <laughs>